Was Julius Caesar a Roman emperor? The question echoes through the corridors of history, a tantalizing enigma that invites us to delve into the life of a man who came so close to ultimate power. Let's unravel the tale of Caesar's meteoric rise, the obstacles he faced, and the Senate's paradoxical role in both empowering and destroying him. Julius Caesar is a man of unparalleled ambition, and by 49 BCE, he's already a living legend. Fresh from his triumphs in Gaul, he sets his eyes on Rome. But not everyone is thrilled at the prospect of Caesar's return. Gnaeus Pompey Magnus, commonly known as Pompey the Great, stands in his way. A formidable general and politician, Pompey joins forces with the Senate to demand that Caesar disband his army and return to Rome as a private citizen. The stakes are high. Compliance would likely mean political ruin and possible execution for Caesar. Instead of bowing down, Caesar makes a daring move. He crosses the Rubicon, a reaver separating Gaul from Italy with his army. This act is tantamount to declaring war on Rome itself. Civil war erupts, pitting Caesar against Pompey and the traditionalist forces of the Roman Senate. After a series of battles, Caesar emerges victorious, and Pompey flees, only to be assassinated in Egypt. Back in Rome, the Senate finds itself in a precarious situation. The Republic is in shambles, torn apart by civil wars and political strife. In a move that reeks of both desperation and pragmatism, they appoint Caesar as dictator, hoping he can restore stability. The term is for an unprecedented ten years, a clear sign of the Senate's wavering power and Caesar's ascending influence. But the Senate's gamble is a double-edged sword. Caesar's growing authority unsettles the very institution that empowered him. Senators like Brutus and Cassius begin to conspire. They fear Caesar's ambition knows no bounds and that he might dissolve the Senate to become a king, a concept abhorrent to Roman ideals. On the Ides of March, 44 BCE, they strike, stabbing Caesar 23 times in a frenzied attack. As Caesar falls, gasping his last breath, the question of his would-be emperorship falls with him, unanswered and steeped in irony. He was never an emperor in the formal sense, but his actions laid the groundwork for the imperial system that would follow, beginning with his grand-nephew and adopted son, Augustus. So, was Julius Caesar a Roman emperor? No, but he was a catalyst for monumental change, a man who both wielded immense power and fell victim to it. His life serves as a compelling testament to the complexities of power, ambition, and the ever-shifting sands of Roman politics. Fascinating, isn't it?